Hi, my name is Diane Lytle, and I'm the primary instructor and the designer of this course. It's based closely on the on-campus version of this course, as far as the main objectives, the textbooks, and the method of inductive Bible study, but the learning activities have been adjusted to fit the online learning environment. I want to share a bit of my philosophy in the design of this course so that you'll have a better understanding of why it's set up the way it is. That way, you'll not only be able to answer your students' questions, but you'll have a better idea of what's happening right from the start. There are two major components to this course. The first is on the philosophy of inductive Bible study. That's mostly the Fee and Stewart textbook and the discussion forums that are related to interpretation and application of the various biblical genre. The second major component is the practice of inductive Bible study. That's the Arthur textbook, the Logos Bible software, and assignments that are related to each step of the inductive Bible study practice. So, let's look at how it works out in this course. Scroll down to the Faculty Resources section at the very bottom. This is hidden from the students and click on the folder. And we'll take a look at what you can find there. First of all, I've tried to include a lot of the nuts and bolts about setting up the course in the Faculty Resources section. This is your key to the everyday running of the course. You should start with the course readiness checklist. Go through each section step by step before the course is open to all students. It may take an hour or two to do all this, but once it's finished, most of the monkey work is done. You can put your time and effort into teaching students rather than getting bogged down in the technology. I won't go through this section bit by bit since I assume you can read, but I do want to emphasize a couple of points. First is the greeting from the instructor. Online learning can seem very impersonal to our students unless we make an effort to humanize our courses, so please take seriously my suggestion to record your introduction with either voice or video. The other particularly valuable part of the faculty resource section will be the sections on the news forum and discussion forum ideas for each week. You'll find these right here in the faculty resources section with ideas for every week. If you schedule to take a look at these at the beginning of each week, you can decide which, if any, of the suggestions you may want to use, or at least you'll have an idea of what they are in case something comes up that you think would be a good follow-up. I think you'll find the potential follow-up questions in the discussion forum ideas especially helpful. They often refer the students to an article or another resource on the web with suggested ways to extend the conversation in a particular thread. The result of teaching this course numerous times, and the students often remark at how helpful they find them. I never use all of them, of course, but depending on how the conversation is going, it's helpful to have them available. Of course, you're free to include your own ideas and ways to encourage critical thinking in the course. But also note that there are copies of the articles that are included in this section just in case the URL is broken. You'll find those listed underneath each week, that those are the possible articles that you might want to use. If for some reason a link is broken, you can attach the actual article itself to the post rather than the URL. Now let's look at the course itself. You notice here that one of the first things on the list is the course orientation. This is a 10 question quiz that asks the students if they've read the syllabus, if they have their textbooks, if they know their BBC email address, and so on. I've restricted their access to the discussion forum and the first week's assignments until they've reported yes to every question. This is a surefire way to be sure they have the basics about how the course works down before they jump in. For the rest of the course, the only restriction is that they have to report they've done all the reading before they can post in the discussion forum. That way we get a little bit more intelligent conversation. There's also a section here on Logos Bible Study software. Once the course opens, you'll probably get a lot of questions about this. So, the answers are yes, they are required to have this program. No, the phone app is not enough. Yes they should message you if they already own it. No, they cannot download it until Logos sends them an email during the second week of the course. Yes, it seems like a lot of money, but they could easily spend that much on one science textbook, but they'll use this program for the rest of their lives. The rest of the Start Here section should be self-explanatory. Just click through it to see what's there. When we go down here into the folders for each week, you'll notice these that are grayed out because they haven't done their reading yet. You go to the course introduction, so the best way to stay on top of the course is to mark any gradable activity the day after the due date, or at the latest, two days after it's due. Since the inductive Bible study assignments build on each other, and they're due on Tuesdays and Fridays, it's very important that the students get input on each assignment before the next one is due. 
When you're given access to your course, you'll notice that all of the discussion questions will show my name and photo. This can be very confusing to the students. We want the students to look at you as the instructor and not feel like you're just filling in for the real teacher. So please take the time to repost all of them yourself so that they show your name and your photo. I know it's going to take a bit of time to do this, especially when they're divided into groups and you have to do them several times, but it'll also give you the chance to think through the questions for yourself. Well, that should be enough to get you started. Please feel free to contact me at dlytle at bbc.edu, or you can call me on my cell, 570-587-7062, with any questions. I'm always open to suggestions for ways to improve the course, so please pass on any good ideas.